Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, March 12th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indetermined Length, episode number... Uh, number... Uh, oh, 687. I remembered think Gary what are we talking about today I totally forgot and that ladies and gentlemen is a bit (laughs) (laughs) what 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 I should have known better I should have really I should have known and I just did not think nope that far ahead about this i didn't think your two theater people wouldn't immediately come up with be like come up with the classic tropes well yeah I pardon mean, me i need to take out my teeth oh god <laughs> <laughs> strangely enough i can do that already i'm like that's not gonna grow old <laughs> yeah Oh my goodness gracious. Well, you know, it's been a bit since see well got started. <laughs> um and with the passage of time, things have changed for us, both physically, mentally, <laughs> and some other stuff. Um, and I guess I was just thinking about how this is my milestone birthday year. Oh, that's my- right. Months from now, several months. From now. Well, yeah, nobody, nobody even concerned that it's coming up anytime soon. <laughs> um, but you know, I just something like occurred to me recently about how uh, some individuals age. Um, I guess at a slower rate or people talk about like, I didn't know they were that old or whatever. And this actually came up recently at work. I was discussing some things and one of my new coworkers was like, how old are you? And I promptly said, there was three of us in the room and I promptly said, well, how old do you think I am? And my coworker, my work wife's quote unquote new work wife was like, I hate it when people do that. And I was like, well, I'm not going to answer the question till I know how old you think I am, because I'm Mm -hmm. just now, like if you're asking that says you don't know, but I think you have an idea, but you're just not certain. So you either Mm -hmm. want your idea confirmed or corrected, I guess. Um, so it it got me thinking and I've had several people comment about how I'm older than, than they think I am. And then I'm always like, do you, do you see this? This this white hat <laughs> right here on my chin, like this doesn't give away <laughs> how old I am. Um, so and then it got me thinking just about like how things have changed in the years that I've been on the podcast. And um and for all of us, you know, we refer to ourselves as cubs. We've discussed this not probably not recently, but it's been a while. We've discussed it about like it's a self-chosen label, it's a state of mind kind of thing. It's not so much about an age, uh mm-hmm. physical age. And so it got me wondering about, like, you know, how things have changed for us in terms of our age, aging, hence this is a let's talk about aging, um, getting older, and how things um, are different. 
mm-hmm. and maybe coming to terms with the naivete of our younger lives when we felt like, well, we've got many years ahead of us. And that is not always going to be the case. And that is like (laughs) shifting. FYI, we did talk about this topic in COL 566. Aging Cubs. Not this topic specifically, but we did talk about Aging Cubs. because, And that was when um, Jeff was turning 40. Okay. Yeah. Two That's years kind ago. of how... Yeah. Well, almost three. Yeah. That's fair. Um, but I think this is... And I don't remember, hence... <laughs> <laughs> This is our topic. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> wow. This is all just falling apart <laughs> fast, isn't it? Um, but I didn't remember us discussing that. But I, I guess what I was thinking about is how hindsight is twenty twenty, uh, mm-hmm. as the saying goes. And you learn things and you know things and you think about certain stuff. And I guess I've had a little bit of a nostalgia. Like I've been thinking back on – like I've been watching, especially online a lot – younger individuals owning their authenticity right and 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 truly being well what they're putting out there is way more than what we did when we were younger right and so i think about like how there seems to be a freedom in the choices that they're making in their lives and how theoretically we could do the same thing now but i think we might feel uh reluctant understood to do that for for many factors and one of them could just very well that we just don't feel that Mm -hmm. (laughs) like empowered or whatever yeah it was rather interesting to me this kind of when you when i was reading through this topic and i was kind of thinking back i was literally thinking back just like about a month ago or a few weeks ago when i was at nab Mm -hmm. um it's interesting to me seeing the broad range of ages at the event, like where, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm thinking this was like the 10th or 11th year for NAB weekend. And kind of going back in my mind about like years ago, not that many, but like, what I thought was maybe a few years, but might've been six or seven, like attending the first ones and all of that stuff. And it just dawned on me how much has changed for the event and for me attending the event. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, younger me probably was very much into like meeting some, like meeting someone, having good fun, sexy times, and then kind of like, you know, having that, those, those, I don't want to say conquests, but those like moments where you enjoy each other's company and then you kind of move on. Whereas I was there now and I was really mostly in the mood for connecting. Um, I was more interested in actually like talking to someone either new or someone I hadn't seen in a year or two Mm. um, that I really wanted to like get a moment to kind of like sit down and reconnect or see how they're doing and how they're, you know, feeling. Um, You know, we, we all had this whole big fucking, you know, pandemic go on and we weren't able to go to the events before, but other than the year that they canceled, I went to each NAB that had happened during the pandemic. Like the 2021 ended right at the cusp of it, like everything started to shut down. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't have one in 2021. And then last year I went, but I competed. So I had this, I was, I didn't have time to connect. 
I'll put it like that. I'll make it as simple as that. I didn't, I was doing the contest and doing all the things and I didn't have time to connect. This year, I had an opportunity to like just sit down and not have to worry about anything and just reconnect. But on the flip of that, I was noticing um, our chats, the chats for the event, the, the Yap App chat and things going on. There's a there was a lot of interest, especially in the younger ones, on making plans, like wanting to either meet someone or wanting to do something, or for the grander scheme of things, like making content for their OnlyFans or just for fans and all that stuff. Like there was all that there was those things that were out there that were being like put out there, and the thing I loved about it was there was no shame there was mm-hmm. no like um they, they they were like i'm gonna be a hoe at nab and i don't <laughs> care what you think i'm literally putting up a poster with my old hole out there for you to see and i'm advertising essentially for you to come fuck me like that is that is the t like like this is what we're doing and i mean that was not that well yeah, that was not really me. There was never really me, either. Even when I was younger, and it's just very interesting to me that that's something that I'm seeing happen more often. Um, we had the whole, I think, for us the concern because you know, sex was I don't want to say taboo, but it was it was it was not what you talked about all the time at least not in big public spaces where everyone has an opportunity to see and hear you. Well, I have your, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, I think generationally we just lived through a different experience, right? Being cisgender men having sex with other men. Like the, the messaging was, it was a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was a gamble. Right. And you just didn't know <clears throat> what was going to come of that. And it wasn't until 96, 97 when the HIV AIDS epidemic peaked and we got the ART medicine cocktails and things started changing in the landscape mm-hmm. <clears throat> that we saw our community start to change. But I think we went through a good at least, I don't know, five, seven years of like hesitancy around Going back to being, you know, um, as others might judge it, promiscuous, um, you know, being more physically active with others. <clears throat> and now we're, you know, almost, uh, well, let's see, 97, what, 16, no, 20, 26 years. Like we're a quarter of a century past the peak. Mm-hmm. And so we have a whole different generation now that they're they're like, you know, no pun intended. Um, they are very much sky's the limit anything's game even mpox last year like tampered some things and i saw a ton of like the community talking about like having some ptsd and Mm -hmm. like the the concern about how we yet again were a part of a of a you know pandemic epidemic thing that was happening and what those effects could be and how older generations were like i'm good yeah, like I'll wait. I can get a shot. I don't. I don't need to be, you know, getting my freak on and spreading things yeah. around. And like, you know, it was, it was. We were aware. Of, we we were aware because we had done it before. Or knew about it enough before to kind of like pump the brakes, take some time. Like I don't need it right then and there. Let's. Or you know, we're just less horny. Well, I don't want to that say, too. I, I mean, mean that I, is, I, I, I think or, or. I was, I'm not saying it's about... the only possibility. But... <laughs> well, I was going to say, but there's but there's more outlets now. I mean, now we have the internet, and we've got smartphones, and we've got apps. So I mean, like you could you could dial a dick any moment you want. You can download, watch like live stream of stuff. Like I mean, and it was so it was very different mm-hmm. in terms of like our outlets. Yeah. Um. I, th- I think it's a multitude of factors um, to counterbalance a, a little bit, not to counter, but, you know, another way to, to think about what I was talking about, though, is I'm like, there's also a lot of older, horny people now 
And I don't, I'm not saying that they weren't horny before, but I think they're a little more open. Um, and we're seeing this like kind of generational change in terms of like, you know, uh, being aware of individuals. I see so much content anymore. And maybe it's the algorithm that's like putting it up in front of me talking about daddies and mm -hmm. you know, silver daddies and mm -hmm. the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know that I'm like totally speaking to you, Damon. Um, <clears throat> But I, I mean, you know, there, there, that is a factor. But one of the things that I also see that kind of keeps getting called around is about um, I haven't really heard too many people talk about ageism probably in the past 18 months. It's like a relatively newer thing. I noticed that it hasn't been discussed as much that like there's a feeling of disrespect from younger people. But what I don't see are like the lessons of wisdom of experience being given out. To say, like, listen, you're going to get old and your body going to fall apart. Sick on break. That. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. Speaking from personal experience. <laughs> but, but I mean, but that's just it, though, Jeff. Like, you know, I've been thinking about it the past two years or so. I've noticed, like, I don't have the range of motion or flexibility mm -hmm. or stamina. Like. <laughs> You don't need to be keeping count, Damon. Uh, no, I'm sitting here looking at the things that are like, yep. Check, same, check, check. Same, right, right, same. Right. Like, I mean, it's like I look at some people and in, in, in stuff online and I'm like, oh, shit, I don't even know if I can touch my toes. Like, let alone, <laughs> like get in that position. Uh-huh. Like, and it is a little wild because, you know, you project in fantasy when you're seeing people do things. You're like. You know, it's hot. You you imagine yourself in the scene, like I would be in that position or whatever. And, and there's a part of me that's like, I don't, uh, I don't know if I can. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen those like pictures of like, which one are you? And it's like numbered, and there's all these people in all these positions. And they're like, I'm number ten, like sitting in the corner, like, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> like I can't straddle anybody anymore. I can't be like all up in all this shit, like. I might be sitting in a chair, like waiting for someone to come over. Like I don't need no, like. <laughs> <laughs> like but it just it it. I get what you mean, and I think that's something that I am also, you know, slowly coming or not slowly, but have been coming to terms with, especially in recent years, um, as I've gained weight and gotten older. Like those are two big things. Like. FYI, everybody, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you want to know, you you do get older, mm -hmm. and with that age becomes usually a lower metabolism, and and, if, and on top of that, you're also not as mobile, so you will find that things start slowing down, including your body, and because of that. You're not going to be as active unless you keep everything going and keep up the routines and what have you. Um, uh, I have found in recent years um, that I know I'm, I'm not going to do certain things because I know at a certain point I'm going to need to sit the fuck down. Whether it's because my knees hurt or my feet hurt or my back hurts or what have you, or a, or a combination of the three, like something is going to be like, oh, I need to go sit down. Well, it's funny that you say that, David, because I see some of these guys who are just like dropping to their knees in a second to suck a dick. And I'm like, right. oh, no. I'm like, not these knees. No. Like, and I hate to make it sound like an old trope, but it's like, baby, once I get down, I don't know about getting up. And then on top of it, I'm pretty sure my knees are just going to, like, hurt like motherfucking hell. Like, mm -hmm. so, and this isn't a matter of, like, oh, well, just just grab a pillow. It's, like, no, it's, like, it progresses. There's a time in your life, I think, where you're, like, oh, I need knee pads. Because, like, you know, knees are not, like, you know, indestructible. Correct. And then there's, like, well, you know, you might do a pillow or, you know, like, a garden mat, like, you know, kneeling mat yeah. or something. I mean, there's these different things over the time. And I think there comes a point where you're, like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. That, 
My neck, know. my back, that song, that's a totally <laughs> different meaning for me now. Just saying, I, I, I knew, I mean, I've always had bad knees. That is just given, hereditary, what have you. Um, so I knew from the get, like, even when, even when I was in my 20s, like playing and being on my knees, like I, we got a time limit. So either you need to go or I'm going to have to stop. And we're going to have to adjust because, and right. especially now, um, it's even, I don't want to say worse, but I, 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 I know the stamina that I had is gone and I'm okay with it. I've made kind of that peace with it because mm. I can find other ways to enjoy things. Um, the, um, I've been on a, a weight loss program. I'm trying to get some weight off. Uh, and part of that is getting up and actually doing stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have been trying to find ways and find methods to start doing things because I know I need to. Right. Because <laughs> realistically, since the pandemic, since I got thrust to like work from home, I don't have to walk to work anymore or walk at work anymore. Right. So that was my main source of exercise. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a lot, but it was my main source and now it's gone. And that's where we are. Well, and so that's one of the things I think we should recognize is that there are mitigating factors that have changed. Mm -hmm. Like the pandemic drastically like shifted our just like mobility, our, you know, uh, doing things. I remember that like suddenly a lot of people wanted to have like free weights for their home gym mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. like they like – got scooped up and then even on like, you know, Craigslist or whatever, they were going for like hundreds of thousands of dollars because, you know, right. it's a hot commodity. It's, you know, capitalism. And, you know, I think about that and I agree with you, like in my previous corporate career, especially when I was a trainer and I was up and down and I was teaching, you know, two, three classes a week and stuff like there was one year, like I really dropped a whole bunch of weight and it was just like, I, you know, reduced how much I was eating and I was putting out a lot of calories because I was just like, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And that's not really been the case, you know, of recent years because I have a more sedentary situation. I have two jobs right. where I sit and work on a computer a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, th those things do change. But I think the pandemic, you know, we spent a year not doing things. And then on top of it, we have, at least here in America, you know, a really bad dietary nutritional kind of landscape and the yeah. most convenient easy stuff is not the things that are really what our bodies need right to be trim and healthy um right. everything is carb heavy with lots of salt and lots of sugar uh potentially lots of fat and so you know and then this past year uh eight months whatever inflation costs go up mm -hmm. and when costs go up People make decisions to, you know, stretch their pennies, their U.S. dollars, so to speak. And so they buy cheaper and cheaper things. Yep. Um, I was just discussing this recently with some with a coworker at my second job because um, with my dad and stuff like I had some time that I had to take off. And at my full time daytime job, like I have good benefits so I can take some some family sick time and like I still get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. But for my part time job, if I take time off, I don't get paid. So every time, you know, I, I, you know, am not there or they ask me about, you know, not working because it's not as busy, you know, there's part of me. It's like, ouch, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's my paycheck, you know, it's my bank account. Yeah. Um, and I would, I admitted to a coworker recently, like I didn't feel the effects of the inflation probably till the end of last year. It wasn't really until December that I was feeling it because like. I was already not spending a lot of money on groceries. And then I was like, wow, I really can't spend a lot of money. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so um, I was, cause they were talking about, you know, and I was like, I got a car repair. 
I got, you know, things to pay for. So I was like, please, like, you know, offer other people to not work. Not my mm-hmm. ass. And it's ironic because you would think, uh, like, as you get older, that you're more secure with your job. And and I think that's really kind of gone. I, I don't think there is such a thing anymore that people have longevity with anything that they're doing, even if it is in pursuit of a career. You know, uh, things are a changing and they are changing rapidly. And you, you know, kind of deal with that. I mean, that's something I've been seeing around me at work recently, and I think it's just not ending. I think yeah. we'll continue to see people leave. And, you know, I was reading up on like about how a lot of the baby boomer workforce was like, screw this noise. And they took retirement. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, they're like, if I'm going to die any day now, I at least want to enjoy some of the days I got left. Um, instead of working until I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. 67, 70, they're like, oh, I can leave at 65. I can leave at 62. Bye. Um, and, you know, and so that like puts crimps on. The workforce and the availability of services and manufacturing. I mean, it, like the whole thing just it feeds into itself, um, you know, and, and so I think part of aging is a lot of things. I think there is wisdom to be gained from stuff. I think there's also other things that come along, you know, and like you were talking about, you know, getting older, um, being less physically active unless you're making that a conscious decision, um, you know, and. How do you address that? What do you do? Um, I was thinking about that. Like, what are the things I'm looking to invest in possibly is some type of like home equipment? Because I realize that if I had something that I was that I was able to do while I was doing other things, which sounds so uh, first country privileged, <laughs> like in a crazy ass way, but it's like, you know, um, if I had that ability to like, you know, watch something while I was, you know, doing another activity that would really be be beneficial as opposed to not. So, yeah, like, and, and I think we have more things that are availability at our fingertips now than ever that are in a way, theoretically distractions, you know? So, uh, I think we find that we are trying to divide our time to do more things. But the thing is, time did not expand. Seconds did not get longer, nor minutes, nor hours, nor days. We still get the same amount of time, and we have to make decisions about what we're going to do with that. Just when we've hit daylight saving time. Oh, all right. Can we talk about that for a second? I realize it's not part of this, but it is an old band gripe. Holy hell. Like, I knew that we were losing an hour. I was well aware of that. And still, when I woke up this morning, because not all of the clocks in my immediate life environment advance automatically, and some might say, well, Gary, why is that? Well, because my stove range doesn't automatically advance. My microwave does not automatically advance. The alarm clock on my nightstand lamp does not advance. Mm -hmm. It's not smart that way. I have to tell it what the time is. So this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, okay. And I thought I had more time. And I was like, that's right. I was going to do laundry this morning. But I try to do laundry like earlier in the morning before the church crowd gets out and blah, 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 blah. Like all this stuff. But I was like, oh, I got some time. So I ended up watching some stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then I happened to look at the clock on my iPad. And I was like, what? (laughs) And then I look over at my phone and they're both matching. And that's when it hits me. I was like, motherfucker. I was like, last night, time advanced an hour while I was sleeping. So when I thought I woke up, it was already an hour ahead. I just didn't know that because I didn't think to myself when I went to bed that I should advance the clock on my lamp. (sighs) I, last night, intentionally went into the kitchen and turn those clocks over, like move them up an hour. Because I have had that same problem. Um, I used to have a, like you, I used to have a, a just digital, but non like smart alarm clock on my, on my nightstand that I had to intentionally move forward in order for, you know, to know the time. Cause it's the first clock I look at when I wake up mm-hmm. and 
it was always a bitch to like look at it and then look like at my phone or something else to be like, nope, that's not right. So I usually will do mine the night before. I'll usually, um, especially for spring forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I will do as many of the clocks as I can. There's only really two now. Um, notice three. We've got a grandfather clock in the um, living room. Mm-hmm. But um, I will move them all forward like at midnight so that it's not affecting anything, whatever. If I'm going to bed earlier, then I'll still do it because those clocks, it really doesn't matter. They're not going to change on their own and ju- you're now two hours ahead or whatever. Right. Um, we have a like this. There's a light to my my right um, that is connected to a plug that has a timer on it, so that it turns on and off. And that ti- that timer is never that clock has never changed on there. So for you know three or four months out of a year, it's on the right time. Every other time, it's not. <laughs> so so I, I and I don't feel I just don't feel like to get every it's the one that doesn't get changed mm. ever because because it's, it's just the timer it's just yeah it's too much of a pain and it it, it it's doesn't i mean it, it it doesn't need it it's in a corner the main reason we had it there was because um we didn't have the smart plugs yet and we wanted something that would turn off and on when um when we are out. It's yeah. funny because I was just telling my coworkers about how I have, I knew I had to change the clock in my car mm. because it doesn't automatically advance the hour or go back an hour. And I said for years, I never bothered with it because I have a cell phone holder that attaches and goes into part of my dash, but the way it fits, it blocks the display. So I can't ever see the time anyways. So I remember a few years ago, I was giving my dad a ride somewhere and he was like, why is your clock wrong? Like it took him a while, but he realized that it was wrong. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, is it off for a couple minutes? And he goes, no, it's like a whole hour. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I didn't change it when the time changed. My father was so annoyed. And I was like, dad, I can't see the time. And he just looked at me and I was like, like I said, I said, look, I'm going to point where I'm, where I'm looking and I'm doing this in the car and I'm like pointing to where the cell phone is and how like the time is on the other side of it, like in the display, Mm -hmm. like I can't see it. So it's not a factor for me because he was a passenger. He was like, the hell? Yeah. Um, (sighs) but it is ironic speaking of the passage of time about how like, you know, time we feel as we get older, time moves faster, you know, like, the days go by quicker, weeks go by quicker, months go by quicker. I mean, we're already in March of this mm-hmm. year. Uh, we've Christ already snakes. We're already in March. We've already almost hit the Ides of March. Well, yeah, technically, we're already ten weeks into the year. Twenty hey. <laughs> percent, right? And but we don't, you know, when we're younger, we we just think that time takes forever. Uh, I remember being a teenager early teen and thinking about i could not wait to be an adult because i knew that being an adult meant freedom of choice and i was gonna make some decisions god damn it what what's so funny (laughs) (laughs) that delusion um (laughs) it's not technically delusion it's all true you just don't realize that there's sort of a balance to that like Mm -hmm. My time is my own. I can do whatever I want with it. No one tells me what to do with my time. True. However, in order to have the things I want, to do the things I want, I need to um, have, you know, we live in a a society that requires economy. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have income. We have to have capitalism. We have to have, you know, all this stuff. So because of that, I have to have a way to have currency, which is called a job. And doing things. Yep. And then the oh. days at the job seem to take forever. There are times, I agree, where you're like, damn, <laughs> this last hour is just. <laughs> Why? Yes. Why? Are we there yet? Why Why is is there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> Why is it still 430? 
why is it only 4.30? Or why yeah. is it only 3.30? Or Okay, or... only half hour to go. Ugh. What feels like two hours later. Oh, finally I can punch up. Yeah. yeah, it is ironic in that there are other times where time just like you're like, damn, where the hell did the day go? Mm-hmm. It's kind of flew by. It's it's always odd to me when I start thinking about like where to do things. Like I was just asked to do something recently and add it to my calendar, and I was kind of like, mm, I do a lot of shit. And I really don't know if I want to add yet another thing onto the pile of shit that I do mm. all the time. Right. Like, um, it, 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 it's funny. And, and again, this could, we could call this aging. We can just call this like owning your responsibilities. Um, if I cannot give or commit to something to a, de- a certain degree, I, I don't want, I'm not going to do it. Like if it's an activity or an event or something along those lines, I, I don't know if I, if I know I'm not going to be able to hit a certain level of my ability to do so, the thing, I, I, it would just be better for me to not do it. Right. Cause I am, I am not one to try to half-ass shit. I don't want to just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, so I want to commit to it. And that is, I think, something that has come with age is owning up to that, you know, I cannot do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think that's incredibly fair that you learn what your limitations are. Or more importantly, you're able to set boundaries. That part. And say, I'm willing to do this. I'm not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. or this is a wise investment of my time. This is not a wise investment of my time. Um, And those become factors in the day to day and, you know, what you want to do when you want to do it kind of stuff. Agreed. Um, Yeah. I mean, and I do think that there's lots to be learned um, along the way as you age. I've always been, uh, I used to be in wonder or in awe. Now I, now I admire that people are accelerated in that, in their timeline. Like people who are in their 20s really have a lot of things about life figured out and mapped out. And so they just, like, they don't take certain things seriously. They just kind of do a thing. They pursue a whatever. And I'm like, wow, go you. Because that's that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not me. And uh, so, yeah, you just kind of, figure those things out um, as you go along. And I think that's one of the things that younger members of our community could have in store for them is to realize like, well, there's a, there's a series of things. Like one of the thoughts that comes to mind is you two are going to get old. Just, just a fact. fact. Yeah. So like your hair's, your body's going to change. Your hair's going to get gray. You might not be able to get your dick up. Like, so be aware that, you know, there will be physical changes um, and to kind of like poo poo or decline or, or no offense, be an asshole to people because of how old they are is totally uncalled for. Right. Um, but yeah, also cool. in that, I, I, I think, you know, like. There's there's so much to be gained in knowing individuals who have had lived experiences that you're not aware of um, and determining like where do we go? What do we do? How uh, can we achieve or, um, you know, withstand what, whatever those things may be? It's like if you have questions yeah. Most likely individuals who are older than you have experiences that can give you some answers or at least insights into mm-hmm. how the past was handled. Yeah. Whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. Learn from their mistakes, as I say sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's funny. Um, I keep thinking back on things and one of the 
thoughts that comes to mind often is like where I was almost 20, almost 20 years. It's, oh God, it was almost 20 years ago. Wow. Not that long. I had just moved here. I moved here in 2002 and this would have been like the tail end of my first year living in Cincinnati. Mm. And it's rather interesting thinking about that time where mm-hmm. I was at life <laughs> because it, it just, it, it's bog, it boggles my mind to think of where I am now as opposed to where I was then right. because, um, no, I hadn't even met Jim yet. Um, I was waiting on someone to essentially confirm their commitment that ended up not being a thing. And I was living in an internship, housing, and job that by this point in time, I wasn't 100% sure how long it was going to be um, mm. and where I was going to go after that. Um and sort of still trying to get my legs in this city Mm -hmm. um, that I had just sort of, you know, I've I've been around, but it hadn't been that long, but it's just, I didn't know everything and I didn't know a lot of people. I knew some, but I think now, and I'm like, I look back on that time and I'm like, I don't think, very many of those people I met then are in my life now from one mm. reason or another. Like think of back, think back to even, even 10 years ago and think about some of the people that you knew and your friendships that you had then and whether you still have them now and whether that's important to you or not, it may not be right, but it was just something that, looking back when like I said when this topic kind of came up I was like I go back to when I first moved here and the experiences that I've had and I'm you know happy for most of them some of them I wish hadn't but um I'm happy because they created who I am and hopefully with that wisdom I can help someone else in the future. Right. And I agree with you on that. Like I was just doing the math and thinking like this year, plus the last residence I was in when I was roommates um, with someone before these two homes that I've had, the most recent ones are more than a third of my life, which is significant to me. It may not be to other people. I mean, everyone has different experiences. Um, this year, uh, I will have been involved with the bear community. I'm I'm doing the math in my head. In about three years, I will have been involved in the bear community for half of my life. It's wow. not quite there yet, but it's it's as the as you keep adding one more year, like <laughs> yeah, like it's making up half of my life. Um, last year was thirty years of being out. Mm. Uh, yeah. So this will be thirty one yeah. this year. I mean, and and so like those are things that I never thought about when I was younger. Like I didn't think to myself like, oh, I'm going to live to be 40, 50, 60, like whatever. Like it just wasn't, I mean, like if I, if someone asked me a question about it, like I might think about it, but it wasn't ever really on my brain or my mind or, and, and the experiences I would have in that meantime. Right. You know, the relationships, the people, the friendships, uh, the family, the circumstances, the tragedies, the losses, like Mm -hmm. the, the happiness of those things. Um, Yeah, like, so I I think that's one of the things that comes about with aging is that there's a lot of uh, potential for perspective. Yeah. How to to look at certain things and be like, oh, I might live in different areas in my life. I might meet different people. I might get involved in different things. I might take on a hobby that I didn't realize that was going to make up, like, 
a chunk of my life. And now when I talk about this thing with people sometimes who aren't aware of this, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. When I tell people, I'm like, yeah, I've been doing the podcasting for over 10 years. And they're like, what? Yeah. And, and it's funny because they're, and I can tell part of the what is, well, you've never talked about that before. And and technically, I mean, the sassy parts to me wants to be like, well, bitch, you never asked. Uh, but <laughs> but on the other side of it, it's like this isn't something I brag about or talk to to people all the time. And I don't think there's a shame in it. I just think there's not a relevance mm -hmm. to it. Right. So like and and we've had so many different kinds of guests and conversations and things that we've had yeah. over all these years that, you know, like we just have a breadth of understanding from a certain cultural perspective. Yeah. And and it's not always relevant to other people's lives. <laughs> uh, I was having a conversation with a younger man, younger gentleman uh, in my, my lift to, I was going to rehearsal. Um, long story short, Jim was running late and I needed to be there by a certain time. And it was like either call an Uber or be late. So I called an Uber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, right. um, he was asking me like, you know, where you're going? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to rehearsal and da, 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 da. And we just struck up a conversation and he asked me, so how have you been with this chorus? And I realized <laughs> next September, so September, 2024, not this, you know, this year, but next year, I will have been in a chorus for 20 years, which is almost half of my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was talking to him and, you know, he was, he was, so, you know, shocked and amazed and, and almost in awe, as it were, uh, about all of this. And I was like, it, it, it was wonderful to have that feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but like, I'm sitting here trying to like talk about it. And it's just, like you said, it's like, it's, this was just been a hobby for me, but I realized it's, it's a, it was more than that for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was something I enjoy doing. It's something that I value. And it's something that for me has become a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. And his youthful exuberance and talking about that heightened my own joy in us having this conversation. Because I'll be honest with you, most of the time when I'm in a Lyft or Uber, I really don't want you to talk to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, like, most of the time, I really don't want to have a conversation. I just want to sit in the back, play on my phone, at for this in particular, I was looking at notes on stuff to like get ready for what I was doing, but we just kept talking and he, it changed that mentality for me that I would like, we were just two people having a conversation. If we had not met, it would have been, it just, I wouldn't have realized that I had this amount of general joy about something that I've been doing for, you know, almost 20 years. Um, and I don't even think I would have realized how long it had been. Um, so it's just, it's funny to me that this person who did not know me, like, at all, was just so engaged in something that he, I don't even, you know, he may not even heard of, mm -hmm. that, um, it prompted him enough to start asking questions and talking to me about it. He complimented my voice, which I was like, okay, that's nice. I don't, I don't normally like, I don't like the sound of my own voice. I'll be honest. Um, but that's just a personal thing. Um, so it was just those kind of like moments that I was like, oh, I, this makes me feel really good. This makes me feel really happy. Thank you for sharing that. The thing I kept smiling and kind of chuckling about is I had this image in my head of you <laughs> with the Michelle Visage gif. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's you in the back of the 